So uh, this is cloud storage and collaboration at uh, NDSU, and we're going to talk about some of the options uh, that are available uh, through NDSU Information Technology Services uh, to help with some of these file management issues that some of you might have and transferring files and, and those kinds of things. Um, the idea is to get rid of uh, some, at least some of these, you know, if you've got a pile of them uh, on your desk at home like, like I do and you have no idea what's, what's on them, uh, some of this cloud storage stuff can help us get rid of some of those and then also from the collaboration and get rid of this. Uh, this is a document I was working on with uh, some colleagues uh, across the country and uh, you can see what happens <laughs> with track changes and and sending a file back and forth and multiple versions and and things happening uh, in that way so some of these collaboration tools we'll talk about today can help you uh, collaborate in real time um, and uh, hopefully a lot in a lot more clean and efficient way than emailing that file back and forth to everybody a million different times so let's talk about um, the options out there uh, as defined by uh, NDSU ITS. Um, you have the shared drives, uh, and most of us are familiar with those, uh, the S drive, the U drive, and the X drive. We'll talk more about those. Um, and then you have Google Drive, which is part of NDSU's Google Apps for Education suite. And uh, the other thing that we'll talk about today is OneDrive for Business, uh, which is part of our Microsoft Office 365 uh, at NDSU. Um, so, and we'll talk a little bit about SharePoint today uh, too. Um, but these are really the options we're talking about. Uh, SharePoint sort of is, is uh, one step beyond OneDrive. But these are really the options that are available to everybody. Um, already, you already have access to them in some way, shape, or form um, for cloud storage and, and collaboration. I haven't mentioned, but but I will mention it now. If you do have questions as I go through this, like uh, go ahead and type them in the chat, um, or there's a small group today, so if, if you want to open up your mic and just interrupt me uh, and ask a question, uh, you can do that as well. So let's talk about the shared drives just a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk about them a little bit because they're sort of old hat for a lot of us, um, although we might not think about them very often. Uh, and um, they don't meet that definition of cloud storage um, because they aren't up in the cloud. They're here on on campus. Um, so I see Becky's asking, do off-campus offices have the shared drives? And I, I'm going to rely on Carol or, or Cheryl um, or Linda to talk about that because I'm never sure about that um, and how our computers are set up with the shared drives. And uh, unfortunately, I don't see that Jerry or John or Blair was able to join us today. So um, yeah, so I see Cheryl says that they do have a shared drive through Ward County. So um, here at NDSU, the S drive is there. Uh, it's a shared departmental drive. Um, so for for me, it's AgCom is my shared departmental drive. I don't have access to any other departmental folders. Um, you can see that, that the storage on each of these drives is limited. So you'll see the amounts there in parentheses afterwards. Um, the U drive, which is for you as a person, uh, I think everybody on here is listed as staff. So we would have 10 gigs of storage um, on our, our uh, U drive. Uh, faculty have 100 gigs. And then there's the X drive. And that X drive is really, uh, sometimes people talk about it as the transfer drive when you're trying to get things, uh, files and folders across departments. Um, and again, that's that's limited to, to 10 gigs. And you can see the note there about additional storage from ITS is, is 50 cents per gigabyte per year. So all of that is, is to say um, that these are limited amounts of storage. Uh, they're a little bit restricted in terms of access, we'll talk about that too. And um, they're not, they're only free up to a point in terms of, of the storage if you need to increase it. Um, what ITS says about the shared drives is uh, one of the big advantages, suitable for pretty much every kind of data that we would have here uh, at NDSU. 
Um, so that includes things that are protected by FERPA, that's Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, so that's anything that's student data. Um, HIPAA, I don't know, uh, the I can't decode that acronym for you, but that's the Health uh, Privacy uh, Act, and so that would be more employee information. Um, data that is generated through research uh, under IRB could be stored there. Intellectual property can be stored there. The only thing that um, there's a question about is anything that falls under export control. Um, I don't know that anybody on this call or anybody watching this will probably ever run into export control issues, but there are certain things where um, they have to uh, make sure that they don't get out beyond uh, the borders of the United States and those kinds of things for security reasons. And those things are case by case basis in terms of shared drive. But um, it's so I guess from one point of view, it, it's very secure if, you, if you're putting things on the shared drive, at least as far as um, as far as NDSU uh, is concerned. It is accessible on, on and off campus. Sometimes that takes a little bit of computer setup um, to do that, to access them from, from off campus, but you should be able to uh, access them uh, as long as you're using your computer um, off campus or even at, even at home, um, connected to an internet connection somewhere. Um, and like I said, limited sharing uh, and collaboration. The collaboration really is non-existent other than, you know, uh, working on a file and re-uploading it up to the shared folder and those kinds of things. So um, I'm sort of afraid to ask for questions about the shared drives because I don't deal with them very much. I don't know a ton about them, um, but I will, if you do have questions, go ahead and put them into the chat. All right, so those are shared drives. Now we have those out of the way, now the fun stuff. Um, so now let's talk about the two cloud drive options. The first one is Google Drive. That's the first one I'm gonna talk about. It's not the first one in any kind of other order. Um, actually, th this shows no bias on my part, even though uh, Becky and Sonia and some people know that I am a little bit biased towards Google. Um, this is how they're listed on the NDSU ITS uh, collaboration and storage site. So I did it in the order that NDSU did it. So um, so Google Drive, we have access to through NDSU and through our NDSU accounts, we uh, that comes with unlimited storage. Okay, so a little bit of a one-up already on the shared drives because um, no cap, no 100 gig cap, 10 gig cap, um, or anything like that. Uh, you can access your Google Drive really easily. Just go to a web browser, opendrive.google.com. Um, in term, when I say web browser, um, it will work on uh, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, uh, and Google Chrome, um, as can be the case with a lot of things. Uh, I had an instance come up today um, where I tried to use a web-based tool with somebody and, and they couldn't get it open because they were an Internet Explorer. So Internet Explorer can be a little bit touchy uh, with Google Drive. Uh, so I do definitely recommend using Firefox or Google Chrome um, when, you're, when you're using Google Drive. It just seems to work better. Um, your account already exists. Uh, it's, it's tied to your NDSU email address. So you can see there on the screen uh, that your username is your full email address. And your password, if you haven't ever changed it, is a default password that um, NDSU set up for you. And you can see the formula there. It's first three letters of your birth month, first letter capitalized, um, last two digits of your employee ID number, and then the four, year, uh, four digits of the year you were born. And that's your default password for your NDSU uh, Google Drive. And that will get you into that unlimited storage, place for collaboration, and all of that kind of stuff. And so, um, in a little bit, we're going to act. I'm going to. I'll share my screen. We'll actually look at Google Drive, talk about how to create things on Google Drive, share things on Google Drive, and um, if you have questions about any of that now or or later, uh, go ahead and put them into the chat. Uh, the as far as NDSU is concerned, uh, Google Drive is cleared for FERPA protected data, but not HIPAA, um, not IRB, not intellectual property. Um, so those kinds of things you wanna be careful about um, not sharing on, 
on Google Drive or storing on Google Drive. Um, but most of the stuff that those of us, I think if you're like me, who are on this call, work with on a daily basis, um, you know, it doesn't fall under any of those kinds of, of protections. Um, Google Drive is accessible from anywhere, uh, not just from your computer like the, like the shared drives might be, but from your mobile device, from your iPad, uh, from somebody else's computer, um, because it's in the cloud, it's on the web, so you can log in with your username and password from anywhere, um, you know, including a computer in, in like a business center in a, in a hotel, those kinds of things, um, and get access to it. Uh, you can share files, folders, um, with anyone, and you can collaborate with anybody. They don't need to have a Google account, um, they don't have to be at NDSU. Uh, all of those things are open to you. And in addition to kind of storing stuff out there on the Google Drive, um, you can create things. You can create Google Docs, um, documents, right? Google Sheets, like spreadsheets, like Excel. Google Slides, so similar to PowerPoint. And then one um, that uh, Sonia and I talk about a lot uh, as Google Forms, which are online forms um, that you can create web-based forms and get that information back into a Google Sheet. So it's a quick and easy way to, to create an online form. You can also upload other files. Sometimes people are a little bit confused about that. Um, if you uh, create a Google Doc, which is sort of like a, a Word document on Google, you can do that, but you could also upload an actual Word document, like a document with the .docx at the end and upload it as a file and it will stay that kind of file. Um, it won't be converted to a Google file. It's, it's just a Word file and it's out there and people, you can share that with people to download. Um, you couldn't collaborate on that file uh, in a real time way uh, inside of Google Drive, but you could share it and, and people could download it uh, and those kinds of things. Questions so far? It's, it's all information maybe most of you already knew, judging from who's on the call here. Okay. So, um, like I said, I'll show you Google Drive in a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about OneDrive. Um, I, I do put unlimited storage there when I talk about OneDrive um, because there is no um, there is no sort of gigabyte cap you know, in that sense, but there is a cap of 20,000 items on your OneDrive. So that would include folders and files. Um, so there is a, there is a limit, but, um, it's a big <laughs> high limit. Um, you access your OneDrive through office 365. Um, and that's at portal.microsoftonline.com. Um, you can also get there by going to the NDSU homepage and going to online services at the bottom and clicking, I think it still says webmail, which bugs me. Uh, everybody on many people on this call knows know that that bugs me. Um, but it is your online version of your Office 365 suite. So it might be how you get your uh, Outlook email uh, through a web browser or when you're on the road or something like that. Um, again, your account already exists. It's tied to your Microsoft account that you use to get your Outlook email uh, on your on your computer on the on the Outlook client. Um, username is your full NDSU email address, and your password uh, is for most people. It's easiest just to say your Outlook password, which is also uh, your Central Authentication Services password for NDSU. So um, if you have ever used Qualtrics, for instance you go through central authentication services to, to log into Qualtrics and you'd use your CAS uh, password, which again is, is the same as your Outlook password that you use to log into your client uh, on your computer. Um, NDSU ITS says OneDrive is suitable for data that is FERPA protected. So it's like Google Drive in that, but also HIPAA protected, um, not, there is no statement on the NDSU ITS site um, that that mentions IRB data uh, or intellectual property, um, but the, but FERPA and HIPAA data are cleared to be on OneDrive. Um, 
yeah, and I just see Becky's question in the chat about that's different than the NDUS one we have to change every 90 days, isn't it? Yes, it's different. Uh, my Outlook password has been the same uh, since we uh, transitioned to all email is on Outlook, however long that has been. At least a year and a half, but maybe more than that. Um, I can't quite remember. Um, so yeah, that, that one doesn't get reset every night or doesn't isn't required to be reset every 90 days like your university system password. That'd be the password and account that you use to access the uh, HRMS system. Um, I know PeopleSoft kind of things where you look up your leave balances and where you may have gotten your W-2 if you did taxes like me last weekend. So um, OneDrive is accessible anywhere, including on your mobile device. So just like Google Drive uh, in that sense. Um, Again, like Google Drive, that you can share and collaborate with anyone, anywhere. They don't need to have a Microsoft account. Um, you can, inside of, of OneDrive, um, use create Word documents, Excel, spreadsheets, and PowerPoints. The thing that you'll see that's missing here that was on the Google slide is forms. Um, right now, there's not a way to create uh, online forms using uh, OneDrive or the Microsoft online tools. Uh, just like Google Drive, you can upload other files that you can't create. So um, image files would be one, you know, a JPEG or a PNG, um, or maybe audio files, MP3 files, um, or just anything else that that's not part of the Office suite. Um, just like Google Drive, it will support the uploading and sharing of those files as well. Questions about OneDrive, and again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen and show you some of this stuff. But go ahead and add them in to the chat if you do have, have questions. So I do want to talk a little bit about SharePoint, um, partly because when, when uh, Becky and I and the re rest of the folks in AgCom talked about it, we did bring up SharePoint. And it is part of, it is like OneDrive, part of the uh, Microsoft Office 365 uh, presence that we have here at NDSU. Um, and the idea of SharePoint, which you'll see when we look at Office 365 is, is referred to sometimes as sites, um, uh, is that it, it's a place to create team sites. Uh, so it's not organized, not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to be organized around a particular department uh, or, or uh, organization within the university. Um, it could just be organized around a team. So for instance, we have one for the NDSU Extension Innovation Team. Um, and it's, it's a shared place where you can organize and share documents together. Um, I see Linda's question there, and, and you'll see the bullet on the slide there. Linda's asking, can we create our own sites or do we have to ask permission from IT? You do have to request them, uh, sites through NDSU ITS, and that's, uh, you know, it'd be easiest to go to NDSU edu slash ITS and search SharePoint to find that little form that you have to have to fill out. Um, you also have a shared notebook in there using Microsoft Office or Microsoft OneNote. Um, and so you can keep a shared notebook. Uh, there's opportunities for social communication inside of a team site if you want to utilize that. And I'll show you that on the NDSU extension uh, innovation team site. Um, the big thing here, I guess I probably should have bolded it or made it big, um, is that uh, SharePoint sites survive the creator account. And as, as of the last time I checked, that's not true of OneDrive folders. So if I, ha if I create a OneDrive folder and I share it with Linda, let's say, um, and I leave NDSU, or the joke I always like to make is since there's buses right outside my window right now, I walk over to the union and I get hit by a bus. Um, when NDSU removes my Microsoft account, that folder is gone, even though it's shared with Linda. Um, that's not true in Google Drive. In Google Drive, there's a way to transfer ownership of files and folders that you've shared. Um, but in OneDrive uh, right now, that doesn't exist. So SharePoint sites are a good option. You know, if you have a group of people who are all contributing a lot of information, a lot of uh, content into one place to make sure that's in a place that is going to uh, 
be sustainable even if if the creator leaves NDSU. Okay. All right. I'm not going to comment on the exchange going on in the chat about uh, requesting uh, sites through uh, SharePoint sites through NDSU ITS. So uh, you, if you're waiting for me to comment, um, wait no longer. So um, I'm going to go ahead and demo now, open up um, my screen sharing. So I'm going to have to stop presenting for a second and get this set up. Just take a, a moment here. Okay, so uh, you should be seeing my NDSU Google Drive. Is everybody seeing that? Is anybody seeing it? Yeah, good. All right, perfect. Um, so this is what I see when I go to drive.google.com and I log in with my uh, NDSU email address and my uh, Google Drive NDSU Google password and uh, yeah, I won't tell you whether mine's still set for the default or not, because um, then you'd be hacking away at it. But um, but if you if you haven't changed it, then it's just the default formula that I showed you on a on a previous slide. And so it's pretty straightforward. Um, one thing that I want to mention is that um, you're going to know if you're a lot of times many of us have other Google accounts, so we might even use Google Drive on those other accounts. Um, you're going to know if you're logged in with your NDSU username and password because you will see that NDSU logo up in the top left corner um, at, when you're on desktop anyway. And so so I know I'm in my NDSU drive. Um, there's, I think Glenn is on and Glenn has asked me this before. Um, there is no way to merge or sync what you might have in an NDSU Google Drive and in a personal Google Drive or a Google Drive under another account. Um, the, the best solution I've found for that is to just, sh when there are folders or files that I want access to uh, through both accounts, I just share those folder or files with the other accounts. Um, it can still be confusing, um, but, but that's the only solution I've come up with so far. Um, so you can see there a couple things. One on the on the left hand side here, you've got a navigation, um, and uh, it starts off showing you my drive. So this is going to be the stuff that you created, um, uh, or stuff that has been shared with you that you're using frequently. And that's how this is is organized. Um, a lot of times is the stuff that's been modified most recently. So so Google tries to show you the active stuff. Um, first but as you can see on mine you know it gets to be quite a bit of stuff and sometimes it can be difficult to organize and find that stuff um, so I just like to use search a lot of times if I'm having trouble finding a folder that I know I have access to or a file that I know I have access to that's what that search is for uh, up here uh, in order to to find that stuff uh, below my drive in the left-hand navigation, you've got shared with me. So this is stuff that you didn't create, um, but other people have shared with you. And um, that is a nice way to, to uh, find stuff that you know uh, has been shared with you. If you don't want to use search, if you want to just jump over there and see what that is. And again, things here are broken down um, by default by uh, when the last time they were modified. And you can see... I hope you can see in the middle, uh, Google's kind of giving me some sections. So here's stuff that's been modified earlier this week. Here's stuff that's been modified earlier this month. Here's stuff that's been modified earlier this year. And then here's stuff that is even older than that. So this hasn't even been modified, um, you know, in the last year or so. So I probably wouldn't pay as much attention to that unless I was looking for something um, specific. Um, other things here in the left-hand navigation, Google Photos. Um, for most of us, we're not going to have anything in Google Photos unless you use your NDSU Google account as sort of your main account. Uh, the cool thing about Google Photos to me is if you have an Android phone um, and you're using a Google account, um, those Google Photos 
uh, can be automatically uploaded to your Google Drive. Um, so if we are, if I was logged into my personal account here, you'd see a bunch of photos. All the photos from my phone would be here because uh, I use an Android phone. Um, you can do that with an iPhone as well. You just have to install uh, the app uh, in order to do that. Um, but it's a great way to sync sync your photos. Um, you can have you can look at recent stuff. So if you're really looking for what's the latest thing that's been edited, um, there's recent there. Uh, you can also star stuff. I don't star stuff. Um, people who know me can speak from experience that I'm not the most organized person in our in uh, our department. Um, so maybe if I was more focused on organizing my stuff, uh, starring things might be something that I would do. And the whole idea of starring things is just sort of set, setting it as a favorite. So if there's a folder that you work in a lot or a document that you use a lot, um, you can star it and that way you could look at your starred items um, and find them really quickly. Yeah. Um, and Linda's saying starring is a neat idea. And, and yes, for people who are, are more organized than me, that is, that is a pretty useful feature. And then you've got your trash. So anything that's been recently deleted, um, I'm not sure in Google how long this stays here. It looks like it's quite a while because um, I've got some things here that I know I deleted uh, quite some time ago um, and they're still here in my in my trash. Um, and so you can recover stuff that that uh, that you've uh, that you've deleted off your off your Google Drive. Um, just wrapping up the left hand navigation here, you'll see the new button and this is where you would go to create something new. I know seems crazy. Um, but if you want to create a new folder to organize some stuff, um, you can see the file upload here. That's what you'd use if you were uploading a file like we talked about before. So you want to upload a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or, a, or an image, a JPEG or an MP3, um, you know, any kind of file. Uh, you could upload and share that uh, using file upload. You also see there's a folder upload here. So that can be really handy if you've got a whole folder of stuff that you want to get up to your Google Drive uh, quickly. Um, you can upload the whole folder and it'll keep the folder structure uh, if, even if you have subfolders and stuff in there. So that can be really uh, helpful as well. And then below that, you'll see Google Docs. So this is like a Word document. I'm going to show you one here in a minute. Uh, Google Sheets. So that's spreadsheets. Google Slides. That's presentations. And if I go to the More button here, you'll see a few more, including Google Forms. Those are the online forms that we talked about. Um, and then there's also drawings and maps, um, which I haven't used a lot. Um, people would probably be a little bit less likely to use them, but, but those uh, capabilities are there. So let's go ahead and look at um, a Google Doc here. I'm going to go back to my drive and find, here we go. So I've got a, I've got a file here that I created uh, just a few minutes ago called Google Drive Sandbox. And this is a Google Doc. So it's a Word document and I'm going to go ahead and uh, open that up. So I've got my blank document here and if I want to start typing in it, I can, I can do that. You can see here you've got all, or I shouldn't say all, but many of the same uh, tools that you would have in Microsoft Word, you know, controlling your font size and your font style and all those kinds of things, inserting images, doing some formatting. Uh, those kinds of things. But what I want to do today is is talk about sharing that because we're really talking about cloud storage and collaboration. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share this um, this document. So there's a couple of ways that I could do it. I could do it by name and I could just start putting people's names in here. So I want to share it with Becky. You can see Becky pops up and I'm going to share it with Linda Schuster. Let's see, maybe I need to do dot like email address. Linda, why aren't you popping up? Well, you can see there's other Lindas there that I could share it with, um, or I could just type in the full email address if I wanted to, to share it with, with Linda. Um, and then I would set, you know, what do I want that people to do with this? Should they be able to edit it or maybe just comment on it or view it? I can set that and then click send and it would send an email with the link to the document, you know, saying Bob Birch has shared this uh, with you. Now I mentioned before, now this is people inside of our organization. 
Um, it could be people outside of the organization as well. Um, they would need some kind of Google account to do that. So if I send this to a colleague uh, at University of New Hampshire, I send it to Steve Judd, um, I might get an email back from him saying, could you share this with my personal Gmail account? Maybe he doesn't have a, uh, a, a Google account um, through his university. So then he'd, he'd want me to share it with his, his personal Google account. Um, because if you're going to specifically name a person that you're sharing with, then they do need the account. The other option that you have here is to just share with a link. And this is a great way to share with a lot of people. So you don't have to type in a billion names in there um, or uh, to share with people who don't have a Google account. So you can see the default up here for this link. Um, it's, it's abbreviated there, but it basically says anyone at North Dakota State University who has this link can view this document. And that's the default setting uh, in our Google Drive at NDSU. Um, so if I take this link and I send it out, uh, you know, maybe I could send it to an email listserv. Um, people who clicked on it would be asked to log in to their Google account, their NDSU Google account, because they have to be at NDSU. Um, and they'd only be able to view it, okay? So that's the default, but I can change that. So I can change it so anyone at NDSU can edit it, anyone at NDSU can comment on it. Um, and if I wanna get outside of NDSU, I click that more button and now I can share it um, with anyone who has the link. And so I'm gonna click anyone who, who I send this link to is going to be able to access this document. And then I can set the level of access. So it says can view, I'm gonna change it to can edit and save. And now I've got this link where anybody that I send it to can edit this document. So I'm gonna put it in the chat and then those of you who are brave and wanna manage multiple windows, um, see if you can get into the document and we'll see if we can do some real time collaboration. So while I'm waiting for people, oh, look at that, someone's in there already. Uh, it's Anonymous Liger. I don't know who that is, obviously, because they weren't uh, required to log in, right? To, they didn't need to have a Google account. And now Anonymous Monkey is in here. And now Sonia is in here because she clicked on the link, but she's logged into her account. So you can see people typing into the document. You can see this all happening in real time, uh, which is really kind of a handy, handy deal. Uh, we will do this a lot in some of the national organizations that I work with uh, when we're brainstorming something. We're working on a session proposal um, for the e-extension uh, event in March uh, the other day. We are all connected on a Google Hangout, so similar to this Skype for Business call, so we could hear each other. Um, and then we are all in a live Google Doc um, typing at the same time. So that can be a little bit scary sometimes, but it can uh, be super efficient and get a lot of work done rather than me doing a draft, sending it to Carol. Carol looks at it, makes her changes and sends it to everybody else. And then Linda notices some changes, you know, and pretty soon you've got, you've got a mess. So just to give you an idea of live collaboration, how you can share stuff and you could share not just Google docs, but any of the files uh, that you would upload. The f you can share entire folders um, so you can collect information that way as well. Questions. Make sure you type them in the chat pod, not in the Google Doc, even though I'm looking at both things right now. But So the other thing I want to mention, go ahead and type your questions um, if, you, if you have them. The other thing I want to mention is that you can set up uh, Google Drive on your computer. Um, and, and create a place on your computer where you can sync files between Google Drive and your computer. And uh, so that way they would be in both places. The advantage of that is, um, you know, a couple things. One is you're somewhere without your computer um, and you wanna get to the files that are, that are on your computer and you have synced them with Google Drive, then they're on Google Drive. So you can log in um, just like you would any other time and access those files. The other advantage is you have your computer, but you're somewhere without internet access and you want to access files that are on Google Drive. Well, if you have this syncing set up, um, they're in both places. 
so they're local and they're also on Google Drive. And you can just do that by downloading the Google Drive app to your desktop. So if you go to Google Drive or search Google Drive app, you'll see that there's Google Drive for Android, Google Drive for iOS, Google Drive for Mac, Google Drive for Windows, um, and I think even Google Drive for Linux, if I remember right. So, um, so you can use that to sync files between Google Drive and your computer. So I see some folks typing in the chat, so I'm gonna wait. Right, so that's what, so Glenn's saying, I can't, you can't sync two different Google accounts if you have them. No, you have to pick one. And so if you're syncing files from your desktop to a Google Drive account, um, you have to choose either a personal Google account or an NDSU Google account. And if you really wanna get freaky, um, if you have an e-extension ID, you have access to e-extensions Google Drive as well using your uh, e-extension email address, which is your e-extension ID. So for me, that's Bob Birch, followed by at extension.org, and then your e-extension password. So uh, Linda's saying, my advice would be to try remain in the cloud if possible. I prefer to sync to my desktop, but every once in a while. Google just forgets to sync, so then a quick uninstall, reinstall gets it back on track. Um, good tips, Linda. I've noticed that too, um, not just with Google, but also with syncing with, with OneDrive for Business, which we'll talk about. Sometimes there's, I don't know, something happens. It gets confused or whatever, and sometimes it's just, just a matter of uninstall or uh, sort of um, going to the settings and disconnecting from an account and then reconnecting it. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and flip over to OneDrive. If you still have questions about Google Drive, go ahead and, and put them into the chat. Um, I'd be happy to answer them if I can. Um, so this is Office 365, right? So um, that, that email or that web address that I gave you, portal.microsoftonline.com, um, that's where you can log into your Office 365. Uh, I'm sure many of you have done that before. And the most common thing that people would do here is, you know, check my email. Uh, I'm away from my computer. Um, I'm on some, some some other computer or I'm on my iPad at home or something and I want to check my uh, NDSU email. So I log into the Office 365 um, portal. Uh, and just quick mention, uh, Carol's mentioned in the chat there, OneDrive for Business sometimes gets stuck in syncing mode but can be paused. Um, yes, that is that is true. You have some control over your OneDrive syncing down in your taskbar. So here I am logged into Office 365 looking at my email. If I want to access my OneDrive, I just go up here to this uh, menu up here, this little grid menu, and here are the different tools um, that are available inside of Office 365, and you'll see here that I have OneDrive, okay? And so uh, here's my OneDrive. Um, my NDSU OneDrive is way more full of stuff than my NDSU Google Drive, um, two reasons. One is I had a personal Google account long before I had an NDSU Google account, and I do a lot of work there. Um, the other reason is I just went through a computer upgrade. So um, lots of different ways to back up your computer when you're switching computers. But uh, easy thing for me was to sync all my files um, to OneDrive and they're all out there now. So if I need to access them, the other thing that did for me is give me a little bit of a clean <laughs> computer. So I didn't just reinstall, you know, everything that was that was on my old computer because some of that stuff I'm not going to use anymore. But I've got access to it out here um, if I need to. And I've got a little bit more of a clean uh, machine right now. Um, so I do have a folder uh, set up on my computer to sync to OneDrive. So instead of using a My Documents folder, I use that OneDrive for Business folder. Um, and then that syncs stuff out to here. Again, for all the reasons we talked about when we talked about cloud drives in general and Google Drive specifically, um, it's it's really about access. Um, and it's also a little bit about redundancy, right? Something happens to my computer, um, I drop it, God forbid, knock on wood, <laughs> cross my fingers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it gets stolen. Um, I've, got I've got access to my files uh, through OneDrive because I've got that stuff synced. 
Um, so very similar to Google Drive, when we're what we're looking here, there are in the left-hand navigation uh, ways to um, uh, kind of narrow your search here. Look at recent files. That's similar to to Google Drive. Shared with me, exactly the same as Google Drive, and then the recycle bin. Um, which is taking a while because of the syncing with my computer here, but um, but again, very very similar to uh, to Google Drive's trash in that recycle bin. You'll see the addition over here of of groups. Um, so this is a way to kind of bring teams together. Um, I believe outside of a SharePoint site, um, so you can kind of create groups. I haven't worked a lot with this. If somebody has and they have more thoughts on that, uh, go ahead and share that in the in the chat. That'd be great. Um, so th there we have that stuff here. Let me go back to my files. Once I get back to my files here, um, just like Google Drive, I've got a new button. Now in this case, things are a little bit different. Instead of docs, sheets, and slides, I've got Word document, Excel workbook, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I've also got the OneNote notebook and now this Excel survey, and uh, that is completely brand new to me. I didn't even notice it when I was prepping for this session. Um, this might be our online form option. Um, interesting. Maybe we'll play with that here if we have a little bit of time. Um, you also have the upload uh, option here. Again, these are for files from your computer. If you just want them to be a file and not... Um, you know, not necessarily a Word file or an Excel file, an image, something like that. Um, you can upload that way. Uh, those things as well, and those all th all those things can be shared. Um, so I went ahead and created um, this Word document earlier, and when I when you create a Word document or or a PowerPoint uh, inside of OneDrive on your Office 365, it's going to open in the online version of the appropriate software. So if you look up in the top left corner, you'll see that it's Word Online. It's not Word on my desktop. Um, it's Word Online. And because it's Word Online, it, it gives me the ability to do a lot of the same stuff that I could do on Google Drive. So let's go ahead and share this one. I'm going to click the Share button up here in the top right just like google drive if i want to invite people by email address i can invite people by email address um, looks like last name is the way to go here Let's see here there's becky so if i wanted to share with just becky um i could i could do that and the same idea applies right do i what do i want becky to have access to just look at it or edit it um, and then if I click share, it's going to send her an email address with the link. Bob Birch has, has shared this with you. Um, just like on Google Drive, I can also share using a link. So if I get a link here, you'll see the default here is it's an edit link and an NDSU account is required. So if I use this link as it is here, only people who are logged into uh, OneDrive using their NDSU account are going to be able to, to access uh, this particular document. Um, I'm going to change that and get an edit link right here with no sign in required. That'll allow me to share it outside of NDSU. People won't have to have an NDSU uh, account. So I've, I've changed that now and I'm going to uh, copy this. One of um, the sort of neat features here that's not available in Google Drive is when I create a link like this, I could set an expiration date for it. Um, which is really kind of handy. Maybe if you want to uh, get some feedback on a draft, um, and you know, and then at some point you want to finalize that document, and you don't want people to be messing with it anymore, um, you could set this link to expire so they they can't get it any longer. So let's see, did I copy this already? I'm gonna copy it now. So here goes this one into the chat. There we go, and. We can experiment a little bit with getting people into this document. Uh, and if you click that link, you should be able to, should pop open in Word Online for you. You shouldn't have to be logged into your NDSU account. Um, I tested it earlier. You know, it worked in Firefox for me. Um, as, uh, as I said with Google, uh, Google Drive and Google tools tend to work better in Chrome. It just makes sense because the same company is, uh, work, is designing the browser as uh, is um, uh, creating 
the the cloud storage and collaboration tool. And um, your Microsoft tools tend to work a little bit better inside of Internet Explorer. Um, I refuse to use Internet Explorer unless absolutely necessary. So this is in Chrome, and you can see that it, it, it's working. It's working fine in Chrome. I haven't had any problems using Office 365 in Chrome or in Firefox. Um, but again, it's it's just common sense that um, uh, Microsoft's going to optimize things in Office 365 for Internet Explorer uh, first, right? Make sure that it works in there first and then worry about the other browsers. So uh, I see Glenn's question there. I upgraded to Office 2016 when I logged in Office 365. It asks about installing Office 2013. Any suggestions? Um, my only suggestion is call the NDSU help desk. Um, I'm not sure about that one um, or why you're getting that that prompt um, or if there's a way that you can can get rid of it. Sorry, Glenn. Absolutely no help. Okay. All right. So um, let's see if there's any other questions here, but that gives you an idea of how you can collaborate, do live collaboration inside of Office 365 just the way that you can. Um, Uh, just the way that you can in Google Drive. So I'm looking at the at the uh, chat here. Then just saying, I think the answer is don't install Office 2013, or do you mean 2016, Linda, with any of the off with the 365 products, right? Um, yeah, or right. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll leave that to NDSU help desk details. Oh, okay. Thanks, Becky. I the, apparently there's some mention of that in the last let's communicate. Um, so look for that. Uh, you can find that on uh, the AgCom website, www.ag.ndsu.edu/agcom. Um, I do want to take a little second. Thanks, Becky. Um, to show you a SharePoint site. If you haven't seen one, sounds like Linda has created some, so this might not be anything new. Um, I'm just clicking the grid menu up here again. And then up here uh, in this big list of all kinds of tools is sites. And these are the sites I'm following. So uh, when a site gets created, uh, you might be um, invited to join that site. So someone sends you a link and you follow that link to find the site. That's sort of the typical uh, way to get involved in a site. And once you find once you're on the site, you're going to have the option to follow it. Um, and that's what you're definitely what you're going to want to do. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back and find that link every time you want to get back to that that site. So um, following that site uh, gets you gets it listed in here. You can see I just have a few. There's one that I created here. Um, that I haven't used very much. Um, I've got access to the new staff orientation one. And then this is the NDSU extension innovation one that I that I mentioned before. I'm gonna pop that one open real quick to show you a few of the features there in the in the site. Here we go. Um, so uh, yeah, I mentioned sharing documents inside of a team site there. Over here are some documents that we that we share and, and anybody in the site can upload and those kinds of things. And then this newsfeed app inside the team site um, allows you to sort of have that social communication that I talked about. So people can post messages here um, and you can like the messages. I like Glenn's there. Uh, you can reply to messages um, from somebody on the team. And, and those kinds of things. But there's a lot of different ways to set these up. Um, my wife works at West Fargo Public Schools. Currently, they're using SharePoint as their LMS, their learning management system. So um, you can set these up in a, a number of different ways. Um, and so each each course at the high school at West Fargo is, is using a SharePoint site for that course. Um, and each instructor is in charge of sort of how that's, that's set up. Um, so you can see this one is set up with with the news feed in it, um, but new staff orientation doesn't look that way at all. Um, it focuses on these shared uh, content items here, different PDFs and and links and those kinds of things that are available uh, through the through the site. And they also have a shared notebook. It doesn't look like they've used it a lot. Um, 
but that is open on OneNote. And anybody who has access to the site um, would be able to contribute uh, to that to that notebook. So lots of potential in SharePoint sites um, I haven't explored at all. Um, I want to get to some of the chat items. Linda says, I was invited to follow a site, then the site name changed. How can I get that changed on my account? Right now I click on the old name, get an error, backspace out of the old info and retype the right stuff, but I can't change it permanently. Um, I'm gonna have to defer that one to help desk again. Um, sorry, I haven't experienced that. Um, the other thing that you might want to do is to see if the creator could um, re-invite you um, which might get you a refreshed link uh, with the right title. Uh, Sony says orientation went online and saved a ton of money without having to print out huge manuals. So yeah, another good uh, advantage of using some of these tools uh, to save some save some money, share some documents that otherwise might be might be printed out. Okay. So I think we have we have a, a, a little bit of time here, so let's do some some social learning. I didn't realize that this um, I didn't realize that this Excel survey was present here. So I'm going to go ahead and try and, and create one here and see what we can do with this this Excel survey, which is a new new deal to me. All right. Well, this is looking very similar to uh, to a Google f uh, form at this point. So it's gonna, let's make this a, a choice question. Okay. All right, so looks like I have my survey. The one question survey, I'm gonna share it. Copy my link here. And paste it into the chat. So can we take this survey? I'm gonna see if this fills in the way that a Google uh, Google Sheet would if you had a Google Form. So this looks very similar to what we're talking about. So you can see I just created a quick little question um, and saved it, created a link, shared it out with people. So I could have emailed that. Um, I just shared it in the chat of, of this. And then I'm, I'm going to presume that when we click on that link, we are seeing uh, the form. Okay, so Becky says her response, response was received, and I can see if you look on uh, my screen share, uh, that's filling into the Excel spreadsheet right now. So uh, I take it back. I'll have to update my, my, my slides. Um, this Excel survey seems like uh, the alternative to a Google form. So a good, uh, it's kind of a neat way to create a quick little survey. We all have access to Qualtrics now. Uh, which is great for creating surveys, but it's, it's pretty robust. It's got a lot of options. Um, these might be some some quick ways to create some fun little surveys using Google Forms, or now Excel Survey, which we just I just found out about. Was anybody else aware of that? Was that only new to me? Oh, okay, new to Sonia. That's all right. I don't feel so so bad then. Okay. Um, all right. Well, um, I don't know if there's anything I missed. Becky, Sonia, um, Carol, uh, anybody? Is, was there anything that that for the good of the order that maybe we should should mention? Or any last questions about any of the options we talked about today? Okay. All right, I don't see any, so I'm going to go ahead and, and stop presenting, and we'll we'll stop the recording. Thanks, everybody. Um, I'm glad you got something out of it. And if you have uh, questions and you want to contact me, you can. Um, just keep in mind, I might might send you to ITS help desk just like I did for Glenn and and Linda. So, all right, thanks, everybody. Have a good day.